What's happening, weirdos? This is a delight. This episode is a delight. It's uh, me sitting down with my new friend, Craig Conant, uh, who I met when he did Montreal. He did uh, New Faces last year, and I was hosting, and I was blown away by his set, and I've been a fan of his ever since. Uh, If you don't know Craig, check out his podcast. It's called Community Service. He's just always a delight, and this was just exactly the kind of episode that I was hoping for fun, light, easy, and then uh, just the right amount of deep, interesting, spiritual fun. So I love it. He's so fun. It was a delight to hang out with him, and I'm so happy to be able to share that with all of you. So check him out. Uh, Check out Community Service. If you'd like to see me doing stand-up comedy, I'm doing more and more of it these days. Uh, I have a special coming out in October on Netflix, so I'm working my new hour. Uh, If you'd like to see that process, which is, in my opinion, Some of the most exciting and interesting uh, stand-up is at the beginning when you're working it out and kind of finding it uh, with the crowd. My next show at Largo, I do a monthly show at Largo here in Los Angeles, is on September 2nd, Uh, but we do that every month. So whenever you hear this, uh, just go to largo-la.com and look for Pete Holmes living at Largo. Always so fun. Thank you to everybody that's been coming out to those. It's incredible. The highlight of my month every month. And I'm also going to be in Denver Um, next week, next weekend, we just added a late show on Thursday because the other show sold out. So I hope people can come out to that late show on Thursday. It's going to be so fun. Me and Matt McCarthy. Um, uh, it's wonderful. I hope you can go, go to PeteHolmes.com for tickets to that after Denver is St. Louis. Um, and then there'll be more and more dates that we'll be adding as they are announced. So go to PeteHolmes.com at any time. Yeah. And if you don't know, if you don't know by now, we don't do traditional ads on this podcast. We only do sponsorships with things that I actually use and actually love. And uh, I don't know if you know this about me. I'm a pretty healthy guy. I'm mindful about what I put in my body. But years ago, I realized I wasn't being careful about what I put on my body, which of course ends up in your body. That's, that's how your body works. But I was out there buying shaving creams and face washes that frankly I thought were good, high quality because they had, I don't know, French names or I bought them at a mall kiosk or they were expensive or whatever, but they're not. They're, they're filled with chemicals crammed in there by corporations that don't care about you or your health, toxicity levels that were never intended for your skin or your mouth or your eyes or your hair, you know, whatever, your gums. I can get that stuff out of there. It's not intended for human consumption. So I realized I wanted my food to have ingredients that I could read and recognize and understand. And I want my skincare to be the same. So enter Living Libations. Living Libations is not only the best and most effective, badass, real life skincare, hair, eye, teeth, even baby care products that I've ever found, but they're also the most natural, made exclusively with plants and oils and extracts that not only will you recognize, but you'll be able to easily pronounce. And now that it's summer, having a natural zinc-based Uh, sunblock for our child and for ourselves is so important. I've noticed when you Google natural sunblock, it's there. Most of them that come up are just claiming to be natural. They're not, but living libations, their love the sun sunblock is zinc based, not only works, but feels great and works great and lasts a really, really long time on your skin. And a little bottle of it also lasts a really, really long time. This is a great way to support the show. Even if you don't want sunblock, they have something to replace everything. We use their best skin ever moisturizer. I use their gum care. It's called Neem Crowley Baba gum care, their toothpaste. They have amazing different, whatever you need. If you have something in your medicine cabinet that you're kind of looking at sideways and not trusting so much, go to Living Libations. They have a premium, natural, and wonderful product to replace the random chemical nightmare that you might buy at like 7-Eleven. So go for 15% off. Go to livinglibations.com slash weird. Show your support for your body, your skin, your hair, your eyes, your nails, your teeth, and show your support of the show. 15% off livinglibations.com slash weird. All right, everybody. Enjoy my chat with Craig Conant. Get into it. Free soap, but also... Cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese? They make cheese, too? But they make cheese and we make cheese, yeah. No, Dr. Bronner's uh, high-roaded us. 
We shouldn't even be talking about it. It's free. I know. It's all right. We love you. No, we do love them. Organic. I also just like that the bar is so... Go ahead. (gasps) Non-corrupted. Magic mind. (laughs) Two camera. Wait, which one's yours? That one's you. (laughs) (laughs) It's gotten to the point where guests now expect and look forward to trying Magic Mind when they do the show, which is great because I... I absolutely I love my it. My first time. And this is Modern Mammals because you got that good hair. Oh, yes. This is the best shampoo ever. You, do you not wash your oil. hair? I wash You use oil. Hair. I, I you actually, oil it for real? I do sometimes. That was a bit of a joke, but yes, I have for <laughs> sure. I have. It's good for you. A coconut oil oh, no, or I castor oil. Oh, no, I put oil in my oil. hair too. But this shampoo doesn't, it doesn't matter. We don't have to talk about that. Oh, Katie, you bumped the wide cam. It's just, a, um, just a bit messy, a bit greasy. <laughs> the headboard's got some oil on it. Yeah, because you're getting <laughs> rode hard, and you're just you're, your own head. Your own head is bumping. No, it's just more castor oil. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. Your hair looks great. You look Thank great. You. I love a sweatshirt. I know. I've been making money now. I've been getting good. That's what you do. Good clothing. You could buy good clothing. Yeah. Are we rolling? Yeah. Okay. Nice. I love this. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say I love that Dr. Bronner says um, uh, all one on it. Yes. Because that, that's I. I'm a I'm a non-dualist, so I like that. I don't know if you're familiar. We don't have. To I don't start even know here. a non-dualist. Yeah. I love this stuff. That's why I love you. Oh man, I love you. Can and, I, well, let me start here. Fuck all that stuff. That's oh, way too soon one. to get into non-duality. <laughs> I love you. I think you're so talented. And when I saw, I hosted New Faces. We're not rolling. I'm just kidding. We're rolling. <laughs> I was like, this, nice, this nice compliment. No, but I mean it so sincerely. I hosted New Faces when you were doing it, and I watched your set, and I was like, "What is, what is happening?" Like, meaning you should be huge, and I think you will be huge, and I think you're already big, but I think you're going to be huge. Thank you. And I think you. It will be deserved, and you're unique and interesting and funny and incredibly likable. And that's all I got. Well, thank you. I love you. It's hard for me to take compliments, but I'm doing better at that. Is that with, right? With the help of YouTube and Dr. Wayne Dyer. But, Is that uh, right? Yeah, I love that fool. But uh, I'll too. never forget that. I don't know if you remember this. I just done my set, and it went very well. And uh, Yeah, it did go well. You came to me, and you're like, like, and you're giving me a compliment. You're like, hey. And you said something like every joke can be uh, like your first joke. Oh, yeah, which is, I, okay, sorry to compliment my own compliment. But I think a joke that you can just do without like already being on a roll is kind of the rarest kind of joke. Like a joke that can open a set. Yeah. So when I said that, I meant that as like, holy shit. Like what what I'm saying, when I'm on a roll 30 minutes in to a set, you can start doing jokes that wouldn't have worked at the beginning. Your because it would have been too out of nowhere, it wouldn't have been the right foot to get started on. All of your jokes were like, you could open with that, you could open with that, you could open with that. And it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. They're all like standalone little pieces. But you said how did Do you how remember? Because I remember you were telling me this and I completely understood, but I just got off stage. Yeah. It was very emotional. It was my first big break, so to speak. Yeah, yeah weird time and, for this face to be like, hey, Craig, <laughs> yeah, no. did you notice every bit could be it? Like, who wants to hear about that the bit no, could be an opener? That. And then I, have, I look how I look, and I was just like this. And you're like, do you understand me? <laughs> and I was like, I understand. I'm just about to cry right now, man. Oh and then I went God. behind the curtain. I just weeped of joy. You did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. So you can feel that. Oh, yeah, You're yeah. You're not completely blocked. No. You can cry a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's great. I'd be crying in the car quite often. It's something about the car and the open road. I agree. And a good song. You just go, ah. The possibilities. <laughs> the possibilities. You're literally moving forward. You're moving <laughs> just, forward. It's what you've just, always just wanted. Take me home. You know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I also just think driving occupies a part of your brain that would otherwise be used to block feelings. Uh, so that mechanism that's out there swatting down, don't think about your I dad, don't think about that first love, that way. and now it has to drive the car, so it's like, fuck, he's unguarded. So I think there's something to be said about creativity when you're driving. Yeah. I also cry on the Peloton, the, the bike. That's similar, though. You're moving. Yeah. You're, you're, you're moving in, and grooving, I know. baby. You're, <laughs> you're moving, you're, and you're you're moving ooh, your Magic body. Mind's good. You're in... <laughs> 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 you're in your body and you're listening to powerful music, music that I never put on. I put on music that won't bother me. That's kind of like 
neutral, Enya. low energy. Yeah, I Enya. put on. And it's funny that you said Enya. I, like Enya. I put on Enya the other day, and it was a kind of a joke. Like I thought it would make my wife laugh. That it was like, who can <laughs> say? Then I just left it on for twenty minutes. That's no joke. And you feel good. Enya feel good. I don't even know who my new artist is, but she sings this song. I release control. Oh, oh my god, that's great. It's fantastic. What a great message too. Yeah, yeah. that's it. I know. And that's oh. so crying on the Peloton, but I get I kind of ugly cry on the Peloton. I get out like a sound. Do you ever yeah. get a sound going? You're sweating and crying. You can't tell where the wet's coming from. <laughs> You're just moist. What's the sound? What's the, the sound? Like, ah! <laughs> it's like it's ugly. And sometimes my wife or my daughter will come in, and I'm just so glad they're not there when Dad's. He's up on the bike. Yeah. Going, ah! <laughs> Uh, is, is daddy okay? And you know what? Daddy is okay. I, I broke down a little bit. We were visiting home and uh, my parents, and I like to make that distinction. Where I live now is my home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was visiting my old home, my parents. And my parents, they're very hard to please, and that can be very hopeless. I don't, Not to get too serious, but it can be hard to make an event it, that they will it's enjoy. Probably, yeah. What would you say? I was about to say my parents are the, the same. They're just hard. You're just like, can't you just say good job? <laughs> you went right to it. <laughs> you went you right to say it. Say something fucking nice. <laughs> you, said, you went. Right. My dad saw me, and he walked backstage, and like, here it comes. I got a standing ovation. Yeah, a thousand people. Yeah, and he just go. And I told a story about him, and all he said about the show, he's pulling. He's always perpetually pulling up his pants. He just goes, that never happened. <laughs> He just immediately starts attacking my story. And my story, the point, the, Craig, the point of the story is that he, I'm telling something that he didn't know was happening. Yeah. Like the point of the story is that you wouldn't know. You're yeah. not the judge of the story. Oh, it doesn't oh my matter. God. But I'm, we're, and this is going to. No wonder we're both comedians and we both cry in the car. Dude, <laughs> the older I get, the more I'm just kind of like, I spend so much of my life going like, you don't have to be messed up to be a comedian. And now I'm like, we're all messed up, but comedians are messed up in a specific way. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Love if, me. <laughs> if you want strangers to know you, you were probably felt a little unknown. Yeah. And if you want strangers to love you, you might have felt a little unloved. I think mine is the first one. Any hoozle. So my wife, bless people say bless her heart in a condescending way. I really mean it. Bless her heart is trying to think of things we can do after the lunch that might be fun, that my mom might enjoy. I'm in a desperate, sad place where I'm like, there's no fun ice cream. There's no fun. Like wherever we go, it will be this. It'll just be like, we'll just change the background. Yeah. So it's a desperate and hopeless feeling. <laughs> and my wife is like, maybe we can get, yeah, yeah. There's no fun to be had. We're going and, with my mother. That's how I feel. I go, you fool. I don't care if we're a Chuck E. Cheese. That's it. <laughs> Valerie, I'm glad you think there's a place we can go where this yeah. will be okay. And there isn't. And that's how I feel. Val might be right. I might just be so blocked in my own thinking. But I'm, I, I don't have the energy to do it. To push a manicure session up a hill and have fun. Yeah. Maybe if I put on a song and dance and like tap dance and make jokes and like take all the onus on me. So anyway, she goes, maybe we can get a manicure. And I just started crying. Because we're, we're about to start a lunch that wasn't going to work. Yeah. And then she's like, maybe after this we can get a manicure. And I'm like, S which is extending. All I want to hear is like, after this we can get out of here. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, let's extend. And I just kind of, it wasn't like a full cry. It wasn't even a Peloton cry. It was just kind of like a, <laughs> like that. And I didn't want my daughter to see because she was under the table rocking it with some crayons. And then Val was like, no, you should let her see. You should show her that it's okay that sometimes you feel overwhelmed. Isn't that great? Yeah. Like, they should walk in on me on the Peloton. God love them <laughs> yeah, yeah. if they can see me. The only time I saw my dad cry was when he listened to Mike and the Mechanics on the radio in the car. Yeah, Go, my, I'm going to take my jacket off. No, my dad didn't cry either. My mom said she saw him cry one time over a dog. Over a dog? Yeah, Enoch. Yeah. He's, Enoch? His, do his dog's name was Enoch. Isn't that one of the pilots on the Nebuchadnezzar? The, I don't even know. <laughs> the, he's the an old spaceship in fella. Matrix. He's uh, he's from Boston and he's, oh no, my dad's from Boston too. Yeah, blonde hair, blue eye, like his drink, like his smoke, like the gamble. Oh no, he grew up in the Moose and the Elks and the VFW. What's the VFW? The Veteran of Foreign Wars, but it's a bar. It's like a nonprofit bar. 
where you could gamble in the back and say bad things. <laughs> That's where my childhood was. No. Yeah, a little bit. I, I mean, a lot of bit, yeah. A lot of bit? Yeah, we spent some time there. Wait, you'd go to the bar with your dad? Yeah. And he'd be with his veteran friends? He's not even a veteran. He just liked the discount beer, and he would take their money. He, he liked it. Oh, he liked to beat the veterans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they the served him money. twice? <laughs> It's like, you served me overseas and now no, you're going to you know, buy me a drink, coffee? Yeah, yeah. The, what that is, life. That's, what? Yeah. Gambling what? Just like uh, everything, whatever. Sports, hockey, baseball, football. Cards? Horses. He loved horses, carts. They had like slot machines in the back. We used to go to machine shops where the guy would just have like Vegas slots and they'd shoot out cord. It was the 90s. It was different, you know? yeah. Yeah, but that, I yeah, I just remember being even being a kid, I'd be like, this is crazy, you know, like, yeah, kind of like this, like, this, this is slot shouldn't be in, in L.A. Not but, anymore. I'm I actually it probably is, but I don't know of them anymore. Only when I was eight, because they're not elite. Wait, you were even out here when you yeah, were eight? Was, yeah, when I was eight years old, I was pulling the slot machine lever and I was spitting out quarters in 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 Los Angeles. What? Yeah, and I'm, I'm not kidding. Yeah. Because you were winning. He's or past was... now. I could say it was like Ray's Machine Shop in Vermont and on Vermont and Torrance Boulevard in Los Angeles. Yeah, over there. And you were getting lucky, or it was broken. No, we were getting lucky. Yeah. Well. Yeah, because we had good energy. We were kids. We weren't tarnished yet. And all the all the OGs. Oh, I remember kids. hitting the jackpot. I was a little kid. Yeah, because you don't have an unconscious desire no. to lose. And I hit like a jackpot. I won 150 bucks, and all the old drunks were mad at me. They're like, this kid just comes in here, and he takes this money, and that was my jackpot. I was smoking inside the bar still. At eight? No, they were. Oh. They, I'm sorry. I'm not being specific. No, not me. I never got into cigarettes. A lot of weed, though. <laughs> when did you start that wait first of all let's unpack that because that's kind of a scary situation you won 150 dollars. i've been at a blackjack table where i was playing blackjack poorly and the guy next to me was mad because let's say i hit on 17 or something yeah. i broke some rule <laughs> yeah yeah and then the next card was a king and it busted and him. he wanted that king and then I I busted, oh, yeah. and then he hit, and he got like a three, <laughs> and he was like, "Well, now I'm fucked." And yeah, he was you, like you. openly mad at me. Rookie, yeah, people don't talk about gambling yeah. Yeah, anger because yeah. you're no one. Look, I don't know. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say nobody gambling. Maybe maybe a few billionaires are doing it like happily, but most people are doing it from a place of like anger <laughs> yeah. and sadness. I hope we get my rent back. <laughs> you ever walk through the floor? Yes, the floor at Vegas. There's a lot of like it's, it's not, not a fun no. place. It's a low vibe. And even if you win, the guy next to you is mad yeah. that you took his card or two. so you win $150 and a bunch of drunk guys smoking are mad at you and you just you just took it? Yeah. I won. Fair and square. I pulled the lever. <laughs> Unfair and square. Yeah, you happen to be the one. It all was illegal. They can't be like, guard them. We're in Los Angeles. But that's what makes it even spicier is that it's like you can't, if they were, if they robbed you, yeah. you can't call the cops and be like, they stole my money that I got from this illegal machine. Like, you know what I mean? It's like illegality begets more illegality yeah. and no honor amongst thieves, I guess, is the other way. Until to say I that. say these stories out loud, I realize how weird it is. You know, you're just like, I guess, yes. And yet familiar. Yeah. When you say that, I'm just sort of like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're kind of lucky because it's like a better scene in a movie, but that's how all of our childhood yeah. felt. Hanging out with dad, whether or not you were rocking it on a slot machine, felt like rocking it on a slot machine. Does yeah. that make sense? Yes. Even if that's not what was literally happening. My dad was out there bending rules, breaking yeah, rules. Yeah. Like I, it was a weird feeling. Yeah. Very different from mom. Yes. Mom's a square. <laughs> when jaywalk, seen her drunk twice in my life, like just a real, just straight Won't edge. jaywalk. She's just an old-fashioned, old-school Mexican lady, very scared of everything that, huh, you know, huh. <laughs> I swear. Oh, oh, Dios mío. Anybody? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I, does does she ever throw out a Dios mío or yeah. was that inappropriate? She said, ay, fragón. And she said to me. Ay, fragón? Yeah, that means like this this freaking kid. Ay, fragón. Ay, this fucking punk. <laughs> oh, no. No, but I was a whippersnapper. But, you yeah. Know. You yeah. earned a few Dios <laughs> míos in your time. Yes. So she's terrified and she married. Why did she marry this man? I don't know. Complete opposites. Just 
just uh, she I'll, married like a crazy look i'm saying you're not saying no, i'm saying from is. what i know i love him but blonde he is. hair blue-eyed boston yeah lunatic out there maybe i would say that as a joke because no, now i'm is, afraid of him <laughs> <laughs> i saw something in your eyes go uh-oh yeah no. and i was like no a good man a good and fair he's man. a good man but he's crazy yeah yeah and w- how did he meet your mom uh, they knew no uh, knew who he, uh, that, 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 that magic mind. Where you at, man? <laughs> <laughs> they met the in high school. Eat modern mammals. <laughs> <laughs> Just eat it like a hot sauce bag. <laughs> uh, go on. Um, they met in high school at Narbonne High in uh, in Los Angeles. Oh, okay, Harbor City, whatever Lomita. And then uh, they dated throughout the years. And then at twenty nine, they're like, let's get married. I don't I don't know if it was. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I ne- there wasn't much love. I don't know. Growing up, I don't think I between them. Yeah, they didn't like each other. Uh, I mean, they didn't get along. It was just yeah. They didn't. They just a lot of fighting. Yeah, yeah. buddy. My joke used to be my parents are still together. Unfortunately, that's the joke. That yeah, I, yeah, are yeah. your parents still together? No. Do, who passed? Ray, who owned the machine shop, or your dad? Oh, my dad's still with us. Ray, that owned the machine shop. Okay, so I'm still afraid of your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk shit about Ray, I guess. <laughs> uh, what are you, Donatello? <laughs> you love machines? Get out of here, Ray. You can't arrest the man. He's passed. Y- yeah, no, he's gone. What illegal right. gambling hall. <laughs> <laughs> That's what his epitaph says. <laughs> Why would you put that on the stone? Weird. I think we should look into that. Yeah. So your parents were fighting a lot, and do you have siblings? Yes, two older sisters. They're five and seven years older. Oh. Yeah, they tortured me. It was funny. <laughs> was it? No. They super glued my lips together twice. Uh, it's it's him. I swear to God. Yeah, Two yeah. labios? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was awful. And then I remember. No, it is awful. How did they do it? <laughs> they you did. do this in your stand-up to you, you. And we're going to do it. We, you bring up things and I have a million follow-up questions and you're just <laughs> on. No one knows how you do that. Did they coerce you? That's one style. Like, we're going to do something funny. Like, we're going to, we want to put lip gloss on you. And and you're like, oh, okay. Or did they pin you down and do it? No, they tricked me. It was always trickery. Uh Uh-huh. First time I was too little, I don't really remember. The second time I remember. I remember trying, I remember my Nana tried to put hot water on my lips. And I was going, hmm. And then the second time my mom just did it with an with the knife and just with cut. a knife because yeah, i was panicking you know and, going, <laughs> and my nose was getting snotty this but is... i was laughing and crying and i remember two little boogers shot out on the ground and it was two perfect circles of snot and then we were laughing at that as i couldn't breathe and was like what your mom was laughing to me and my sisters and then my mom came in and, and I just i remember having bloody lips that's all i remember i was probably oh. like five and seven or something okay yeah. Which one of these is the trauma cam? <laughs> that is just traumatic. And the and the mixing for you of the laughing. Like you were laughing. Yeah. So you you know what I mean? It's like you're being was, gassed to death and there's laughing gas. So you're like, going ah, on. Ah, like, ah, you're dying. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot, the blending of that had to be really difficult to unpack. Yeah. And then after she freed you with a knife. And there's two perfect circles of snot on the ground. Was there like, were they in trouble? Mm, I don't think so. Because I agreed to it. Like if that was like the rules. Like wait, you agreed? Yeah. Like I, I think I remember stuff like lessons like that, like from my dad. Like, well, you agreed to it. Like, don't agree to it. You know, I can't punish them. Or maybe a little bit. It was nothing what? made you sense. Were five? Nothing made sense. <laughs> nothing. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad that you figured that out. That doesn't make <laughs> sense. Well, the child signed on. Yeah. Like, if, like literally. This is why they made that expression. If everybody was jumping off a bridge, would you do it? When you're five, yeah. Yeah. You would. Yeah. Because you'd be like, they seem to know what they're doing. Yeah. Like you're learning everything from everyone. The, yeah, the list is long what they did to me. Uh, These two girls. Yeah, I love them to death. They saved my life many, many times over. and, and From me stuff out. they did? Yeah. <laughs> well, he agreed to it, but we should still <laughs> we should still save him. Uh, so yeah. you're good with them now? That's oh, nice. Oh, yeah, we're super close. Like we're actually, two lips super glued together <laughs> that close? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to San Diego after this family vacation. Really? Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. I also just noted that the age is rough. Five years is is a is a lot older. So you're not really. They had peers. each other, and I was yeah. the I was alone. 
but you, like and a boy alone yeah. and young a baby boy yeah and when you showed up were you a disruption to the whole family is no, that no my feeling? dad was uh he had to have a son he oh. was sprouting them out till he had a son, yeah. One of those dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There would have been five like of us. Like Nebuchadnezzar those. before yeah. him or, or yeah. Caesar. I'm <laughs> a junior. <laughs> Craig Philip Conant Jr., yeah. <laughs> buddy, my my brother is a junior. He's not a junior, but he's a third. That's another way of yeah. doing it. Same thing. We've talked about this before, but I'm like, how much pressure is it that your dad is like, you're yeah. me? Yeah. Or did you like it? Maybe it felt... No. No. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time in my life that I was like, I'm not the third. My brother's the third. And then eventually when I was like eight or nine, I was like, oh, good. Because there was pressure. It's yeah. like your pressure. Yeah, that was for sure pressure. It was, it was just, yeah, you know. What else did your sisters do to you? They made me drink perfume. It was in like an advertisement, a Real model. Quick, did you agree to it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so you're complicit. Keep going. <laughs> you agreed to it. You I child. It. I think I threw up immediately because they had an advertisement. I think it was Obsession. Remember that old fragrance sure. Obsession? Yeah. And a model was drinking it out of it with the straw. Like that was the ad. Oh. And they're like, see, this model drinks it. You could drink it too. And I was just like, okay. I feel like you have a lawsuit on your hands. Yeah, you yeah. can't show. Was there fine print? <laughs> yeah, probably. This is like Pepsi, Where's My Jet? Which was the. I Did you watch Pepsi, Where's My Jet? Mm -mm. Don't watch it. They draw out a, a 40 minute story into like five one hour episodes, and you're just like, Does he get the shit? <laughs> I won't even bore you. Uh, keep going. You drank it and threw up immediately. Drank you, threw up immediately. They tricked me into drinking Philip's milk of mag magnesia, which gives you diarrhea because my middle name's Philip. And they're like, It says Philip, and it tastes minty. So I was always drinking it. So they're and always, I always giving had diarrhea. And then they, they, uh, all of it. They did the Three Stooges. The they put the tick, you know. Yeah, sure. And then blood just started. My, yeah, because yeah. everything the Three Stooges do to each other, if you really did it, like a hammer in your nose. <laughs> yeah. like, I hate the Three Stooges. They represent everything that's wrong <laughs> with everything. Yeah, you hurt someone and then you go, get the fuck out of here. You're in the way. You're stopping human evolution. <laughs> Fucking bull-cutted, mean face. Like a, a face that says, I've been abused yeah. my whole life. I've never had a fair thing happen to me. And I'm going to take it out on my friends. <laughs> Get over here. Hit him with a board. Oh, there was a nail in it. Sorry, Curly. I grew up on the three here. stages. All like, that old school shit. Uh, W.C. Fields. Yeah, all of it feels so mean to me. It is really mean. It's mean. I'm not saying there isn't a place for it, but every like in Boston too, everyone loved the Three Stooges. So yeah. when I was into comedy, they were like, "You must love this," and I was like, "There's three men that seem to be fighting over the last meal on earth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they're fighting for their own survival in black and white." But you liked it, and W.C. Fields. Yeah, and Abbott and Costello. And they were less mean, right? Abbott and yeah, Costello. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, who's on first, dudes, and then Jackie Gleason, the Honeymooners. He, he, I had an eclectic childhood. I'm grateful for that. Like just the stuff, Nana. Of course, I know who Perry Como is. You know, I just yeah. like weird shit. Can we st step out just for a moment and appreciate that one of the most famous routines of all time, who's on first, mm -hmm. requires that before you see the routine, you see the baseball diamond with the labels. Oh, do you remember? Or you maybe you don't, I don't have even to remember see that. It. I played baseball, so I didn't need it. No, I don't mean to understand. I maybe okay. I'm realizing that I'm wrong, but when you see that routine is on a loop in Cooperstown, where the Baseball Hall of Fame is, and next to it there's a, a diagram showing you like who's uh, the n name of the yeah. guy on first is who I don't know is on second and whatever's on third, <laughs> and I just realized that I thought they walked the audience through that before the routine, but they didn't. No, they got it back then. Nowadays, they need the diagram to explain to the TikTokers what baseball is. That's true. Yeah. Baseball is the opposite of TikTok. Yeah. It's way longer than a minute. Oh, yeah. It doesn't care if you're interested. Did you play baseball? I did. I was the catcher. Nice. I well, played. I was shortstop, third base. Yeah, see, you seem like a, you're like a cooler guy. You're out there no, make, making a huge. difference. huge. Catcher's a wall. <laughs> You could be replaced by a soft wall. <laughs> you flatter yourself that every once in a while you you'll worthy. whip your mask off and look for a pop-up. Don't, don't listen to your parents. You are worthy. You're not a wall. 
You know what a catcher is? A catcher is, you know how a toll booth can just be a basket you throw a change in? Yeah. And then next, my friend John Roy used to have a joke about how on New Year's Eve there's no one sadder than a toll booth collector <laughs> on New Year's Eve. 30 feet away there's a basket doing the same job. That's how I feel about being a catcher. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you could just be nothing. Yeah. No, take, you wear you so many pads. Second base. Never happened. <laughs> Over the head. Over the head. I'd throw it into center field. <laughs> Give him third. <laughs> I hated I hated being bad at baseball. Yeah. I think because of that, I'm still kind of afraid of things that I'm bad at. I know everybody is to a certain extent, but I'm like, oh, it'll be embarrassing if I try. No, we have to be perfect at everything. That's right. <laughs> you know when there's like a stand-up show where they're like, and then at the end you sing a song. I'm like, I'm not available. Yeah. Even though I love, I like singing. I can't But I'm it. like, if I can't nail it, I, I'm like, I don't want people no. to be like, oh, it was funny. He did it like funny. I'm like, no, I want them to cry. <laughs> the goddamn comedy jam gives That's me it. crippling anxiety. That's I'll, be like, I'll be like, no, thank you, Josh. Yeah, Josh. I can't do it. God love him. He's like, come do it. And I'm like honestly i'm never available and i'm like thank god i'm not available yeah. because i don't want to be bad at something no i can't say it ain't hey. so <laughs> i can't where is my mind <laughs> oh my god is i would that be what you did sing the pixies yeah that's you got to do it maybe yeah so you drank perfume what else did they do to me everything no we had the best times though we we play school and shit i'm uh yeah what do you mean like they'd be the teachers, and we'd just play school in the garage on the. So they liked board. you. Oh yeah. It wasn't just torment for torment's sake. No, no, just a little all, all encompassing. And you said Nana introduced you to the Three Stooges. Oh Nana, yeah Nana, she's from Boston. She said Kapak. Kapak? Nana was crazy. <laughs> Nana was wild. <laughs> Nana had three husbands, buried them all, buried a son. She's just uh, oh, OG was born in. Can't be stopped. Yeah, she went to like 96 or something and drank like a fish. Like everything, like I remember the Not doctor 1996. was... 1996, she lived until 96. Until 96, yeah. And well. then the doctor was like, you can't drink anymore. And everything was like, I'd rather die. Like that, that was her answer. Whoa. Was like we need to take your car away. And like, I'd rather die. Like it's a bit, but it's not a bit. It's just that was her... She kept driving. Oh, yeah. Past the point of being allowed oh, yeah, to drive. Oh, yeah, she wouldn't. We had to take it away. She kept getting in accidents. Of course. And she would do hit and run. They runs. get in walking accidents and at that she age. she just would take <laughs> like, off. And No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, she, she told me and my sister, she drove through the hospital uh, parking lot arm and we asked her like what happened she said i wasn't sticking around to find out oh and she just took it out the, the parking booth guy can thing. you imagine how many accidents <laughs> happen in the hospital parking lot that's where the old people are going also i had my eye- also when they're sick too they're probably yeah, like, yeah that's it and you get your eyes dilated yeah, yeah. and everyone's like wait 45 minutes no, no. old person is like yeah i'll wait I'll 45 home. minutes i survived the war yeah i could make it home <laughs> She was alive during the Great Depression. She had money before that. She used to wear minks and had a chauffeur, and then it crashed, and then she went to poverty. Whoa. So she'd be like, give you like 50 cents. And, like, and you'd be like, what am I going to do with this? But Whoa. it felt like a million bucks to her. To her. Mm-hmm. I still don't fully understand the Great Depression, meaning if your Nana had a million dollars in 1931 before the stock market crashed, but she has it. It's not in the stock market necessarily. I guess we'd need an economist to explain this. But if she has a million dollars in the bank, oh, I guess then the banks don't have the money. That's it. I just Is that what it was? I don't know. I, think I guess the banks can't actually give you your money. So even rich people. I wasn't poor. alive back then. I should have asked her more questions. She's I dead know. now. Yeah, but she would have been drunk. <laughs> yeah. She wouldn't. She would have had no answers. She was like for nerd. You. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, nerd. Here's two quarters. <laughs> Nana was crazy. But she introduced you to comedy. Is that real? Um, or who, where I want to know when you started smoking dope, and I want to know when you started figuring out that comedy was for you. I started smoking weed at 12 years old. How? Uh, my sister, <laughs> not to put her on blast, but I was <laughs> bugging her, and I was like, hey. "Oh, what you knew she was smoking?" Yeah, I, I the year before I thought it was like crack, and I told on her i ratted on her i was like cynthia's gonna die she has weed oh yeah and then when i found out what it was really was then i wanted to try it <laughs> and then uh, and then she smoked me and my buddy out and it was love at first sight and it was what was the first one like i couldn't stop laughing yeah. oranges never tasted so good goonies was never funnier 
chunk was hitting his, you know. Oh, chunk is oh, made for chunk. weed. Chunk. Yeah. And uh, oh, chunk. It was, and we eating top ramen and oranges from my backyard, and it was just heaven. And and it took away the the pain or whatever. Yeah, that's sad. sure. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it did. Then you check out for the next twenty years, but I'm sober. Uh, ten years, August tenth, from narcotics and alcohol. I started. Wait, you don't do weed anymore? I, I was just getting to that. I started smoking oh, sorry. weed. <laughs> I was 100% sober for eight years, and then I made it through about half that pandemic, and then I started smoking weed again because I didn't. I needed something, and I didn't want to take head meds. And immediately... Uh, what did, what, why? What, did, what was the cue that you needed something? I started headlining, and I went from zero cities to 59 cities, and I don't... I was... I was, it's really hard, Pete. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, that was my no, first you're just, year. You're not talking it. to somebody that would be like, that's the job. I'd be like, that sounds like hell. It it was too much, but Wait, I, this is I was during hungry. the pandemic. It was in the middle of, yeah, yeah. So you I, were doing like. I got launched because of the pandemic. I say, it's funny. This is how I interpreted it. Yeah, some of y'all were too famous to go, but I was, I was just coming up. Yeah. So it was bad PR for sp- for big dogs and then i was like i'll go and then they literally i got in everywhere and i was what are these shows like outdoor or just masked or all of it like literally outdoor in texas indoors uh like you saw it all you saw the different (laughs) parking lots but you saw the places where it was like we just don't acknowledge it doing like an actual comedy club but just in the parking lot to places that were like we don't care and uh really and then i remember you didn't get it from huh? those shows, no, I it's, it, I, I, I got I, it at home actually of all places. That's so when funny. I was the only time I had a break was December and I got it then. Didn't COVID just show us that like germs are like <laughs> we just don't know like we can so easily be taken down by germs? Meaning, <laughs> sure, do it outside, do it there, and then you end up getting it at home. You know at what I mean? On, my, on the three weeks I had off, I got it at home, and I was like, I was out yeah. there. The I was in Texas time. indoors. We communities too. Yeah. Flying early, you know yeah. the road. Yeah. And uh airplanes. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Airplane seems like where you would go if you wanted COVID. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then it turns out And then it just happened rooms at home. Or airplanes? I was like, right now? Wow. So you started touring too much, I'll say it. Yes. Because your agent was like, let's Both. go if you want to go. You were you in fairness. I'm a hungry, hungry hippo. I just so got there. I was like, give me the work, dad, give me you, the work. And then they gave it me consent. and I went and I said yes. And then yeah. halfway through, I was like, oh shit. You agreed to it. I am dying. Your dad was like, I, I, am I dying. I, <laughs> and then I started smoking and it was a beautiful medicine that helped me, but then I'm a little fiend and I immediately started abusing it and and then it switches to a coping mechanism. I'm an addict. You know, I have the addict mind too. I'm a self-diagnosed addict. The reason yeah. I stop from saying I'm an addict is I picture a, a room full of real addicts yeah. being like, you don't know, you don't have the yeah. certification. There's many different levels to it That's though, right. right? So what do you mean? It's like That's this, right. you don't. I'm telling you, I'm wired that way. Yeah. I'm relating to you. And my, I want to know if like, you, at the beginning you're telling yourself, it's like, you are kind of lying to yourself, but you have to, you go like, or you feel like you have to. You're like, I need something and I'll do it with these rules. Did you have rules? I had rules. What were the rules? Just uh just as a medicine. You yeah. know, as it's intended, as it's supposed to be, if if you could have a healthy relationship with it. Right. And my tolerance was super low, so I could take like a little two milligram gummy. Yep. And be affected in a beautiful way. That's me, by the way. 2.5. Yeah. Get and those. it's lovely. Yeah. But then I got this hungry as soon wolf. As, I, as soon as I get 2.5, this is this is what addict yeah. feels like to me as I go, how far can we go with this? Yeah. How far can we take this? Within six months, <laughs> I, I was taking 25 by noon. Wow. Milligram, you know, wow. two milligrams to 25. And, I, and then like drinking lemonades that... That had it. They, I'm let back in, and 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 it, they have everything. I'm gonna say something kind of crazy. Is the perfume lady, the lady drinking <laughs> obsession with a straw? <laughs> that's weed stores being like, do you want a, a Kit Kat? <laughs> and it's like <laughs> it has perfume in it. You know what I mean? Like it it has. Does the perfume get you high? <laughs> you you, you I'll drink take it too, <laughs> and it's obsession. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm obsessed. I think we're gonna look back on this time that we're in right now as insane for two reasons. You know how we watch Mad Men and we're like, I can't believe they were drinking all day and smoking all day. They're going to look at us and they're going to be like, I can't believe they had their phones, which are emitting microwaves and, and 
brainwashing I know. us. Speaking of which, I'll just throw that yeah. out there. And, <laughs> and, and weed. I Look, I really mean this without judgment, but like, I just think weed is really benefiting from an incredible marketing campaign where you can be like at a children's birthday party and be like, this is a little overwhelming for me. And then go smoke a joint, come back and just announce to the parents, like feel a lot better. I just smoked yeah. a joint. Look, okay, maybe. Yeah. But I do think in the future, we're going to walk, watch that back and be like, that's Don Draper being like, this is a little much. I'm going to have seven beers. Like it's, it, I, th I think we it's just don't have that yet. It's it's a trickster. Cause it's lemonade. Cause it yeah. It's a Kit Kat. That's my quarrel with it. Cause it can be good in the proper medicine. Like I made a joke. Like you don't drink Dimetap every day, all day. You're not supposed to. It's right. fucking medicine. Right. Or Advil. That's, Advil. You're not supposed to. It's really bad for you. And anytime you switch that, you ruin it. And that's what we do. We just ruin it. We're gluttonous yeah, and, yeah. We, and we can never feed the beast. And then your tolerance goes up. But if it is used occasionally, I can't do it. I don't know how You're to have it again. No, I am struggling. <laughs> I've been trying to quit. <laughs> I made it a month and then I went back and then like, I'll make it three days. And like, I, I'm, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard. It's, yeah, no judgment here. Yeah. I, I, I think it's beautiful that you're talking with such clarity about it and also being honest. You're like, I, I, I hate my I relationship with it. Tell me everything. I, I just, I hate that I feel like I need it. Like I'm sober for this because I love and respect you and I wanted to be sharp, but I really wanted to smoke this morning and yeah. that bugs me. Yeah. You know, like why do I have to fight so hard just to not take a few hits? What, what does the voice say? I know people, a friend of mine that got sober, he told me like, I'd go on a walk after I got sober and I'd see a sunset and it was beautiful and the voice would say, be way more beautiful if you're stoned right now. That's, Is that one of them? Mm -hmm. What are like the other everything. ones? Everything. Just like, oh, those dishes will be more enjoyable. Just everything. Just to do the dishes. Just everything. Like, oh, Target. It doesn't matter what it is. You're just like, I could be high for this. I could be high. The only thing I will never be high I, for I is stand up. I high for this. <laughs> it's such a simple... There's an ache in that too. Yeah. It's it's not a funny t-shirt, but it's like a t-shirt that says, I could be high for this. I don't want to be, yeah. but I need to be. Yeah. Like it's a shitty, shitty thing. I don't I like it. What were you gonna say? You started to say stand up, you can't be. Oh, like certain things I care about enough, uh, they override. Like I won't be high on stage, even though I did try that a dozen times and it, it doesn't went, work. No, either. it's I've it's, done stand up stone like terrible. once or twice. And I, I've said this before, but I, I want to see if it makes you think of something. The crowd became orcs. I don't mean visually. They just seemed like Lord of the Rings, like, oh, it's scary. Oh, it's, oh. Yeah. And they were friendly. They were a good crowd, but I felt like I was throwing them like legs of lamb. Yeah. Not jokes. I was like feeding them I don't in enjoy a frenzy. High. Yeah. No, it was I don't scary. know how those people will just smoke and take the stage. And, and I'm a stoner since yeah. 12. And yeah. I'm like, uh -uh, uh uh. Yeah. You do it after you get off. Yes. That's another thing, too. Like, oh, I can't wait till I'm done with these shows. Buddy, it's tricky. Let's go get high. So something that I have, this is absurd, but, like, I like nicotine. I've never smoked in my life, but I like nicotine. And one of the things, I'm using it again, using it, only when I'm writing because I like it. And the temptation is when you get off stage, so your dopamine just spiked. And nicotine spikes your dopamine. I don't know what weed does to your dopamine, but I'm assuming it it I increases hope so. it. It's a feel good <laughs> chemical. If it's not dopamine, it's another thing. But what's weird about substances, just in general, is they are these feelings usually reserved for some sort of feat. You go for a jog, your 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 body awareness goes, hey, cardiovascular healthy. Even though your body doesn't know these words, is like that's important. That will keep him alive. So when he finishes a jog, give him a good feeling so he'll marry the idea that when I go for a jog, I get this feeling. You do stand up. I think it might not be his body. But it's more like a courage thing. It's like a bravery thing. It's an expression thing. It's a creativity thing. It is deeply good for you. No matter what your venue is to create and express yourself and to, and to push yourself uh, and not be afraid is really good for you. So your body gives you all of this like, hey, you survived, you did it. You yeah. did something that scared you. So it gives you the good feeling. The risk even if it's just a fucking glass of Coca-Cola of marrying the good feeling that your body is giving you dopamine and you give it another substance that increases dopamine. Mm. Like Aerosmith used to talk about cocaine. They do cocaine. 
And then I saw Steven Tyler be like, now I eat cream puffs. I'm like, it's kind of the same thing. You're, you're still <laughs> high on dopamine and you eat something else that gives you dopamine. And, and then that's a tricky marriage. You know what I'm saying? Like that's where, so what all of that is of to say. I never thought of it that way. That's interesting. When I get off stage, of course I want to eat some yeah. nicotine gum. I just don't have it. I'm like, it's only in my office. It's only in a drawer. I got to keep it the fuck away from me. That's not even true. I have something in my pocket right now just in case I felt I mean, a withdrawal. I mean, I <laughs> it's like emergency <laughs> nicotine. But but I don't want to do what I have done in the past, which is like take something that is good and marry it to another dopamine increasing maybe I not I never so thought good. of it that way that's interesting no I'm ready I'm so ready to quit weed again I said I was going to be on it briefly and here we are like two years at it I'm like fuck how did that happen tell me go back to the part that that said I'm touring too much and I need it it was because of stress it, oh I might cry it was too many things bro oh my uncle just passed from COVID and mm. uh, Eric Myers a dear friend of mine had just passed and I was on the road and this was happening and I can't cancel. Yeah, I could, but like, I know that's my mean. daddy. He ain't like, he's get this shit done. Well, but he, I there's his that, voice. Though. Did you agree to it? I did. Buddy, it's lips glued together <laughs> again. You agreed to it. <laughs> I had it's, to do it. It's not a good. I can't bail. You are under no obligation to be the person you were 15 seconds ago. You know I what know, I mean? But I don't mind that. I like, cause I'm, I like, being a man of my word and getting shit done, uh, you know, I to understand. a certain extent. There's a, if there's it's a virtue to it. detrimental to your health, take a fucking break. But I was just got there, you know? I yeah. was, imagine your first time there, and I was like, I can't, I gotta get in, gotta get in. Anyways, uh, wait, 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 where's the train of thought? What was We're going to about? how weed kind of helped with the stress. Oh, yeah. Two deaths, like bang, boom, road. Loneliness. Loneliness. Right? Road, road means loneliness. Hard. You're not uh, touring with anybody. No. Uh, I started to now uh, half the time. It's you know it's just costly, and we 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 worked our way up. It's crazy. Yeah, I want to say to my, I don't. <laughs> I say it to you. But you want to say to the opener and be like, you know, the flight was seven hundred dollars. Yeah, you know, you just you, you just, just want like, to say it. Yeah. But I, I would sell say that, that merch, boy. <laughs> yeah, every every opener I've had, I've wanted yeah. to be like, did you know your hotel yeah. is um, six hundred dollars? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I know I'm, I'm giving you this for the show. Do you know the hotel and the flight was three times this? Like it, it's rough, but it's a mental health. It's good for cost. your b- you mind, body, I, soul. I say to my my current opener, I go, it's worth every penny. It's it's worth twice what it is because you go like Steve Martin, you go crazy. Yeah, it's what it is. So you're trying to do that now. The loneliness. How do you feel about the shows at um, that time? I was nervous because it was my first time running hours, but it all worked out. I, I had like it, it in working. me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it was just a lot of nerves, pressure to sell tickets, deaths, the world shutting down, not knowing what's happening. And then and, I yeah. started smoking and it did help me uh, profoundly. You know the expression, it's good till it's not? Or it's exactly. work, it's, it works it's, till it doesn't? It's fun until it's not. Like, fun yeah. anymore is a common saying in the, uh, the program of out. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey. I'm not supposed to. Yeah, hey. I'll say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Who cares? It saves lives. Go do it if you have a problem. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Why do they want not to be named? I don't know. It's a beautiful, and we know they're like what the, it is. They're like the Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> like um, don't things. It's like yeah. we're only available one month. Okay. Or don't talk about us. <laughs> it's Fight Club, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and it did help. And then it quickly switched to abuse. Maybe a month or two in. What is that? How did you cross? What does it look like to cross the threshold? You wake up and you smoke. Yeah, because you'll be sober by the time the show starts. Yeah, and I then- relate so hard to that. That was me and booze. I was like, I'll be, I'll sleep at three o'clock. Yeah, and I'll wake up at seven o'clock and I'll be sober. And I was like, looking back, I'm like, what the fuck what are the you fuck? doing? You're not supposed to have two days in a day. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? And neither of them are actually days. I do the same shit, just <laughs> right? smoking. I'm like, oh, I'll get a nap, shower and a nap, and I'll be sober by the show. Yeah. Why don't you just? Live your fucking day. Well, what does it feel like to live your fucking day? See, what I would say to myself at that time is, what feelings are you unwilling to feel? In your your story right now, grief, you lost a friend grief, and yeah. an uncle. Yeah. So that must lead to some sort of like meaninglessness. Like we're all kind of just headed towards that anyway. Don't let me put words in your mouth. How did no, that feel? No, I've always been a hippie. I actually wanted to ask you this. Uh I've always believed in oneness. I ate a quarter of mushrooms at like 15 years old. You start to think differently, you know? And uh, 16 or whatever. And uh, 
<laughs> wow. So I know what time it is. We're all one, and it's all love and consciousness, and we just go home, and this is a temporary experience. Yeah. I'm a fan of Bill Hicks. Yeah. And your and your boy Ram Das and yeah. all those fools. Yeah. Dr. Yeah, yeah. Wayne Dyer, Luis Hay, Joe Dispenza. Yeah. So I, I always ah, I always knew I'm all so that. So happy shit. for you. Yeah. That's great. Uh so I knew I wasn't alone ever. But you do feel alone, you know, even if you know that information. It's You're still, speaking right to my heart. Yeah. I was thinking about that this morning. I was like something Ram Das used to say is if I know all this, why am I still here? Like, what am I doing? If yeah. this is a classroom and we have to figure out what you're saying, it's it can be frustrating. Ooh, this can, is fun. Do you believe we choose our parents? Yeah. Yeah. I think we I actually, I'd go farther and say, uh, I'm a character in my own dream and you're a character in my own dream. And the whole dream is a booby trap to make me trip back into the love that I really am. Every, but everything is orchestrated Ooh. by... Not me, but by the one mind that we all share. Yeah. But it's 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 um benevolent. It's 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 arcing towards love, you would say. It's yeah. trying to trick you into waking up, even if you're suffering or whatever. So not only my parents, it doesn't stop there. I not Pete, but I made the guy that cut me off in traffic today that I would have an opportunity. That's the part I struggle with. Yeah. It's like I created all this background noise. Like yeah. I made it this busy at the airport in this dream world that is supposedly fake and I struggle with that all the time. You're just like, I make this silly joke, like I stubbed my toe, that felt fucking real to me. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's well, hard. It, my it's friend just, says, if it's all one whose headache is this? Because yeah. pain is real. Yeah. So what is it at the root of the pain? What, what I'm studying right now, of course, in Miracles would say that we feel guilty that we broke, we separated from God. So if it's all one, what are we doing here? And there's this liar in our minds, our ego that says, well, you wronged God. There's a Greek myth about stealing fire from the gods and running out, and that's life. So we took the light of God, yeah. life itself, and we stole it to be it gave special. It to us. I'm I'm with you. All of this is bullshit. Yeah, but it's what we unconsciously believe, and that's too painful. So we create parents that give us uh, trouble. We create people cutting us off in traffic. We create horrible shit so we can go. It's them. It's projection. It's go. It's them. Yeah. It's not us because the guilt is too unbearable. I'm not saying that's necessarily literally true that's what i'm fucking with right now that's what i'm fucking with too and it's like everything's a mirror and it's supposed to teach you a lesson and it's yeah. like i'm Can not I, like that that guy's a piece of shit right you know I, mean? I think the lesson is if you want to believe that you are innocent that piece of shit has to be innocent i tell you that as someone who just 10 minutes ago was complaining about my parents yeah and then you you turn and you go i know it's hard but i have to go like the the more i study whatever i'm even studying i don't i don't I'm not the most articulate with it, but I just love all this stuff. It's, oh no, I already had ADHD. I lost my train of thought. Pardon the interruption, weirdos. This episode is brought to us by our wonderful friends at BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. And like before I went to therapy, I had no idea what codependency was or how to end a relationship in a healthy way or how to set up boundaries with family or people I work with. But that's what therapy is all about, deepening your self-awareness and your own understanding of your life and of your own dynamics. Because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things with a professional. BetterHelp connect you with one of those professionals with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are because the more you know about yourself the more easily you can maneuver through life with less suffering and more clarity relationships grief loss anxiety you name it talk therapy has been so profoundly and deeply helpful to both me and to Valerie talking with a professional helps it's greater than the sum of its parts it seems like you're just talking but it goes deep and makes lasting change. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash weirdo today to get 10% off your first month and support the show, support yourself. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash weirdo. 
We're also brought to us by our friends at Next Evo, my favorite CBD company. I love summer. Summer means taking trips and traveling with my family. But that's, you know, it's not always easy. Travel is stressful, it can be hard on your body, and it can be disruptive to your sleep. So whether you need to de-stress or keep your sleep on schedule, uh, keep it on track this summer, CBD can absolutely help. And Next Evo Naturals is absolutely my favorite. They knock it out of the park. The two criticisms that I hear when I talk to people about CBD is that it takes too long to kick in and they don't feel it. Next Evo is a different kind of company. They have figured it out with something they called Smart Sorb Technology. It's proven to be 30 times better absorption in the first 30 minutes and four times the overall absorption as other products. That means it kicks in quickly and it absorbs truly and honestly and completely so you can get that dose just right and you know how you're going to feel almost right away. So not all CBD is created equal. A study by an independent lab confirmed some brands contain up to 60% less CBD than they claim on the label, but with Nexevo, you can trust you're getting the best of the best. They just test it multiple times to ensure you get 100% of what's on the label. And you can tell. Their stress gummies are CBD and whole plant ashwagandha. Those are lifesavers when I'm feeling overwhelmed and anxious. If I'm stressed and just can't get on with my day, can't face my inbox, can't handle travel, can't handle the summer, can't handle company, they're my secret weapon to round out the edges and get me back ready to face my day. If you've tried CBD before and didn't get it or you didn't like it, trust me, Next Evo is different. Give it a try and leave summer stress behind and upgrade your CBD. Go to nextevo.com slash weird to get 25% off plus a free bottle of premium pure CBD. That's a $50 value, limit one per customer. I love their pure uh, premium pure CBD, especially when you're fasting. You don't want to take any, any calories whatsoever. You take it as a pill. It's awesome. That's N-E-X-T-E-V-O dot com slash weird. Support your body. Support the show. Get 25% off. Nextevo.com slash weird. All right, everybody. Back to Craig. Have you done ayahuasca yet? No. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only, only eight times. <laughs> yeah. Eight times. Yeah, I'm going back for nine and ten in a week. Let me ask you a very, very simple question. Because it's complicated. Yeah. Do you like it? Uh, yes and no. It is... It is uh, you go to hell so to speak you can yeah you can if you choose that you go do the shadow work and you fight stuff you feel like the medicine asks you if you want to do that yeah you're in you co-create with it 100 percent. they teach you that i have a very safe circle and they teach you that and how it's like choose your own adventure oh, wow. and if you're in the depths of some trauma or whatever you're battling and uh, you can just say, this is too much for me right now. Let's go to love and light. And then just like that. Have you done that? Yeah. You've done that? Yeah. Because that, what you just said, is the closest I've come to being like, okay. Because I just don't want that involuntary, just the bathtub gushing out of like, here's no. everything you're not ready for. And there's many misconceptions. You do not poop your pants. You're in control. Yeah. Like, the shaman I've actually the wore a thing. diaper his first hundred times. He was so scared. Wow. And then he's like, after like 80 times of not pooping, he's like, what am I doing? I think I just like wearing diapers. <laughs> <laughs> like that was his revelation. <laughs> Shit. I just like that snug. Wouldn't you like a diaper on? <laughs> you know what I mean? I put them on my baby. It's just, woo. <laughs> yeah. My Never daughter. so safe. Dude, for real. My daughter is four and a half. She's about to be five. She, the other night, asked me to put a diaper on her just because she just, sometimes you just want to feel like a baby. Yeah. That innocence, that beauty, that that's a sidebar. That's so, so tell me, okay, so you, to choose your own adventure, you co-create with it. Yes. I would, I would say that that's sort of similar to what we're doing here, but in yes. a more extreme way. So tell me the story. I, we'll go back to the first time you did it, but tell me the story of a time you can remember where it was getting, it was confronting you a little too much, and you were like, let's stop. I, uh, yeah, I was fighting my liver. I, I, it felt like the devil. It felt creepy. I hate even saying that name. I, I was, the pandemic made me start getting all religious. Eh? I don't so think to speak, you, spiritual. I don't, I don't think you're alone there. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I just remember like purging this, this beautiful soul in the corner saying this song, I am light. And, and it literally, it sound. I don't, I, I know what I sound like, but it was like her light expelled negative entities out of us. That's how it felt. I yeah. And uh, the beautiful thing about ayahuasca is 
you're purging, you're vomiting, uh, but it's actually a detoxifier. So you're getting rid of heavy metals, pork, oh, wow. poisons, probably microplastics. It cleans you up on a physical uh, level. And now that they're scientifically studying this, there's data behind this shit. But then in the spiritual realm and emotional realm, you're literally vomiting like maggots and you're going, you're in, but it's, it's, uh, you're getting rid of addiction and, 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 uh, abuse yeah. and molestation, whatever people yeah. are there to heal from atrocities. Yeah. And, uh, and I give the analogy like this cause it's too hard to encapsulate in any definition. It's just a vast ocean of love of consciousness that you tap into mm. that even the, what do they call it? The quantum field or something. Sure. If you want to be sciency or love or light or eternal light. Yeah. And you, uh, you just expel these demons and and it just like get rid of shit like actually heal you know how you say like you forgave someone yeah but then you don't yeah on the sauce i could just call it the sauce you That's do nice. you do you actually <laughs> your face. do your face you let it go oh. you let this weight and you just feel like oh the analogy it's like a deep tissue uh massage Mm. How it can be extremely painful, but then they pop it, that stress. And, yeah. And you, then you're free. They work it out. You're free. And right. and that's how you feel. Because the feel way light. out is through. Yeah. We're we're a real go around. And oh, it yeah, seems that's... to me like ayahuasca is like, no, let's go through. Go through, yeah. Like through the you're avoiding this about yourself or you're avoiding that that happened to you. Am I am I putting words in your mouth? No. You do it, it's uh, I was trying to just get it all. I'm trying to remember. You, you experience hive mind too. Like I've mm. never I've always been a hippie and I've always believed in this stuff, but then to actually experience it. Yeah. Like totally I love different. Bill Hicks. I love like the enjoy the ride. It's fear yeah. of love. And I downloaded yeah. that data long ago. But then when I do ayahuasca, I'm like, oh, this is this is fact verification. You're talking click. Yeah. You know, and I go, oh, and you get downloads and like like messages. Like that's what I'm here for, to build yeah. the heal, to help. Yeah. The addicts, the junkies, the yeah. knuckleheads. Yeah. And the choice between fear and love. That's that's of course in miracles. That's the whole yeah. thing. Is like don't be afraid of God. Learn that you could say he's your father or or she's your or she's your mother or it it's you. Yeah. One I just wrote on my mirror, our will is one. Meaning God's will is my will. Not Pete's will. Yeah. But my the my real self and what God wants is the same thing. It which is really powerful. It is. I've also been saying to myself lately, just be nobody. Like I'll be at a party and I'm overwhelmed and I'm like, it's because you're wondering what Pete should do. And I go, just be nobody. I and you can. Yeah. You go, there's like a zero place where you're just like, might be weird for I've other people. I've been saying the opposite. I've been saying, I am God. <laughs> well, that that's what I mean. <laughs> okay. That that It's the same sort of idea. I am God is great though. It's a little more positive than yeah. just be nobody. I have to do that one for that reason because uh, it's more positive. It's more self-worth. And that's what I go to ayahuasca there for, self-worth healing and and uh let go you know forgiveness and when you were being confronted you said to it this is too much for me oh yeah yeah i was battling that was the f craziest shit i've ever experienced in my life because that was the first time i could say like i had a religious experience i don't really go to church this is my church the ayahuasca church yeah sure and uh that i'm down with but i just you know the big organizations got a little manipulated so sure and uh so you're battling this shit in my liver and it was just so dark and that was and i felt like light coming in through old girl's voice in the in the corner singing i am light and they have music just everyone's a musician there and they're singing these beautiful ikaros that are indigenous to these tribes and they're uh they said it's like the analogy the birds chirp to the flowers to open it up they sing the songs in the circle to open you up mm. to expel these garbage you know weight yeah, whatever yeah, it is yeah, yeah. and uh yeah i just remember it getting too much and i was like i can't do this shit let go and i literally felt like a like a hand and that's when i was like what the what the fuck was that i don't know if it was my like mind you felt something yeah, was holding felt you a and grip. let you go and i couldn't that's what i did it shared in the sharing circles like the grip like i just kept being like because i'm fighting them you know whatever it was negative shit and i and i was, I was like the grip he had on me i was like what is this and i felt like the the songs and oh they have tuning forks and s tibetan singing bowls and frequency machines and this shit's hitting me and that's when i had like the religious experience so to speak 
where I started doing breath work I didn't know I knew how to do. You know what I mean? And I, I was, I was di- doing love and light coming in this way, expelling bad shit this way. Just intuitively. Home, yeah. Yeah. Like sitting upright, straight spine, like more, more, you know, like all of a sudden I'm, somebody's guiding me. It wasn't me, bro. Yeah. And the tuning forks and you start like, like moving in motions is very tribal. Mm. Like, uh. <laughs> I was about to be funny and be out of the moment, but I was like, I started pounding my chest. I really do that now, though. It's very powerful. Mm. Say I love you and hit your heart. And uh, no, really? Oh yeah, yeah. In the mirror, and it just helps get that heart center to going. Like push it into your body, kind of. Yeah, and just it was too much, and I was purging, and I got rid of it. That's what I say. Like I said on my podcast, like I fought the devil. I didn't kill him but i got his legs you know we got rid of half that motherfucker wow. and it's just uh unbelievable and who actually made me go was what was uh, the breath work it just was like i was doing it reminded me this is how i don't even know the name of it but do you know the hulk when the when edward norton's getting breath work uh from one of the gracies in the beginning to to hold down his anger no it reminded me of that okay. like i started doing breath work like i saw in a movie once wow but it was real breath work it was like some wim hof shit like i couldn't even replicate it right now and i yeah. fucking did it but i you was were just, just on the i was divinely guided by source because you dip your toe into the consciousness that's where it's all there it's all there this is the all and one you never want to leave yeah. that's what i mean like and now i know when people die why they say like and they get brought back like why'd you bring me back yeah it's a reoccurring theme that they all say if you talk to any er doctor i go down youtube rabbit holes i like this stuff yeah and uh, i touch the pond and it's just sacred geometry and 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 just ocean of love really Mm. well i was curious how visual it is how how much of it is an overwhelming like are you in the room oh you're in the room um you can only get to the visions if you meditate if you quiet your mind really it's not like an involuntary if your mind's too powerful if you have ocd to the millionth degree it's hard to get there Mm. that's also why i keep going back it's like of the eight times i've done it i've went to the love pond six i missed two Mm. and what were those like they're still beneficial they're still uh, you didn't get immense self-reflection and deeper understanding of oneself but do you want to touch the love you know yeah and then so you touch it and the shaman taught me he's like it's the most beautiful thing on earth and it heals you so go there and touch it stay there maybe about 30 minutes but that's when you get the work done so once you're done in the pond of love of consciousness light whatever you call it that's when you say show me more show me more and then you could go to bad places it's and like fight once, once you're with emboldened light. with love it's like once you trust reality yeah you're brave enough it's like I, it's funny that you say that it's like raising my daughter i'm really proud at how fearless she is like this is going to sound absurd but she'll hit me and i'm like yeah because you're not afraid of me it's like my <laughs> proudest thing you know what i mean yeah. like she just clocks me she's playing she, yeah. she we, we go like this yeah. like boxers. She'll just hit me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, because you trust me. And when you trust God like that, you're like, okay, what do you want me to learn? Yeah. And that's like kind of what we're yeah. maybe here to do is learn how to For sure. trust. It's, it's, it's what they say too. It's uh, shadow work or what we call shadow work. I don't yeah. understand it, but I just know uh, I've never felt lighter and lighter. And that's also why I keep coming back. And I also thought I was going to be one and done and healed, but it's just like layers. Does just, it linger? Layers, I hear you. Uh, yeah, yeah, it lingers for a week to two weeks. Afterwards, you're real high on God and everything's beautiful, more beautiful than usual. Mm. Um, okay. You see the miracles and everything from that bush to that camera that's working, you know? Right. Oh, my God. Don't get us started. <laughs> I mean, it's everywhere. It's crazy. <laughs> it really is. Even we were talking about my parents. This is a good weed story. I took 2.5, my like, because I after a long it day with my with folks, the parents. it does. <laughs> it does. I, I don't want to do it when I'm with them because I feel like my guard is down. I feel too exposed. But that night I went home and I took a, a 2.5er and I, in a genuine way, not a gaslighting myself way, I was laughing and going like, oh my God, they're perfect. And I really meant it. Not like I love everything they do and I like everything they do. I just meant like, 
Nobody is like them. They're really incredible. Yeah. It, whether or not I like it or don't like it, I saw them as this like distinct, unique phenomena, if I, that makes sense. I had an appreciation. No, I, I, uh, I agree. I, I'll have experiences like that. Like, oh, they're perfect the way they are. And then like five minutes later, you're like, ah! shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let you're me like, tell you oh. this in case it makes you think of something. <laughs> I did 5-MEO DMT, which is, ayahuasca is DMT. I love how us hippies know, like dimethyl tripped at me. Like we know all the chemistry. It's so silly. The shaman doesn't like that. He doesn't. He wants you to do it natural. Yeah. His What he said was like, don't do that. That's man. The syrup is fermented in the jungle for thousands of years. Oh, and wow. this is what synthetic a, de a decade old you know he's like wow he's like don't do that wow and i was like oh. i've never talked to somebody i'm like first of all i would do it with you there's something about you come with me the 18 <laughs> <laughs> your face <laughs> when you talked about forgiveness i saw it on your face i saw somebody that has experienced the joy of forgiveness because you say you do and you don't you're like i forgive you i forgive you and you have this yeah it's and not a the... mental act it's a miracle mm -hmm. forgiveness is a miracle mm -hmm. and you need to like receive it but it, you don't think your way to it no you surrender your way to I, it or something. i don't know how to achieve it without mushrooms or ayahuasca i'm working on it yeah. you know i don't want to have to yeah Although it is a beautiful medicine, it's not. It's no problem. Like once I started going to these circles and the guy's done it 800 t times and he's a lawyer and has three businesses, I was like, oh, this is fine. Yeah. This is, wow. sp everyone who does does this a lot is, they have a glow. You could, you yeah. could feel it in the room. Wow. It's like the people when I go to the program, the room rooms, there's like two people in there I want to be like, and they're the people with 30, 40 years sobriety. There's that level of surrender. Yeah, like a stone. Yeah. Yeah. And the rest, I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> like, right, yeah, I don't right. want, we're all here to be like them. Right. I would say this syrup is like a shortcut mm. to, to, you know, I don't want it. I don't want a 30, you know, I want do you, it now. <laughs> do you, have you ever had that experience? I want to tell you my 5-MEO story, but ha, do you get the sense that, when you're there that it like used that lawyer and his glow and his story to kind of not trick you, but to coerce Craig to do it. Like it loved you so much that it was like, don't you see I hid in a vine and I hid in a, some bark of a tree and I made ayahuasca a thing. And I, I, you heard about it and it was like a seduction. If that makes sense, I get the feeling like I don't no, want to put it in your 100%. mouth. percent. No, it, it absolutely really? is a seduction, you, you understand? and I feel like because it's a spirit, it's a spirit. And once you start doing it, like keep in mind, I'm a comic, and I was very judgmental and making fun of these people, and then now I'm like, I make jokes, but I'm like, hey, where'd you get that poncho? You know, like yeah. now I'm like, I want all the stuff. Hoppe, where'd you get that tool? What's <laughs> you know, and uh, and in the beginning, I'm like, what the yeah, hell? Pan flutes. Yeah, you'll be the first pan flute comic. It's a spirit, and it's yeah. it's it's awakening as we are awakening because it is time. Well, this is what I mean by our it's will the new is Earth one, and what's coming. Yes, and how these negative psychopaths that have this current bullshit system—that's all a lie. This this is what a scam. Have the, you heard of Earth ships and free energy? <laughs> what is that? You don't know the earth ships? No. Um, this uh, place in New Mexico where they build homes into the land and it's like 90 to 100% self-sufficient and it's cheaper to build and it's made with trash. Michael Reynolds builds them. He's uh, been doing it 30, 40 years. Earth ships? They're called earth ships. They just build it into the land. And it's you mean like Santa Fe? Like it looks like a little yeah. adobe kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, and it uh, goes with the flows of nature and collects the sun this way and holds the heat because they build it into the earth hmm. i'll send you a link your, your mind's link. gonna be blown send it's, me all these it's links. a simple solution like that that could solve the world's problem but it's not being pushed but they just take our money and you right. know give us drugs instead right and mcdonald's is legal you know i was just talking to somebody about that where i was like they don't care they don't care yeah they don't care. if they cared they'd get rid of the cancerous poisons in our food that right. are illegal in all the other countries but right. somehow are legal here right i just learned about microplastics and forever chemicals and it's just like i need to stop learning this shit yeah because you just go ah oh, it's heavy it's all of it it was i feel like there was it, it, i don't want to put down another country but i saw a post that was like even here 
I don't, it doesn't matter what it was, but they were like, this is illegal and it's in our food. And I was like, fucking nuts. It was um, Father Greg Boyle who wrote Tattoos on the Heart, which is incredible. If you haven't read it, you got to read it or listen to it. I was, how'd you know? I was like, I'm an audible guy. Listen to it. <laughs> listen to it. Yeah, no, I am too. But he, I love books, but on Audible. Me too. You I'm also, dyslexic. I just read and I don't get it. And I'm I was like, just, oh. I was just listening to something that was like, we've only been reading as human beings for like 500 years, but we've been listening for thousands of years. Okay. So we're way better at listening. You've been making me feel a lot better about myself. I love you, Pete. I love you. I was, That's what this is. I was getting in my head like, why do you only like Audible? Because it's like you said about the plant. It's like this is old. Yeah, listening okay. is old. Reading is new. Yeah, yeah. We're still See, in the baby steps of take reading. That, daddy. That's right. <laughs> Suck a dick. Higher education. I'm sorry I couldn't read your boring ass textbooks. Boring. Fucking suck. Now look at me now. Yeah. And I'm, now you read my book. I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> I made it. You know, I'm at Magoobies. Do you know how good it is to not be a fantastic reader? I read every day, but like I'm not tearing through books. You know how great it feels to write a book when you haven't read. I have read hundreds of books, but I'm saying I'm not like, I don't consider myself a reader. And at the same time, I'm like, and I wrote a book. It feels really nice. I can't wait to write a book. Yeah, scam it. That's I'll what I'm saying. Ghost writer. It'll be, <laughs> you'll still have it on your shelf and you won't read it. What were we saying? What were we saying? We were talking about ayahuasca. We're talking about, oh, microplastics. Oh, and Father Greg Boyle. So we were talking about how he changes the names of the homies in his book. So if he writes a story, he'll change the name. And he was like, we were talking about the legal department. And he was like, if the story is about someone who's passed, the legal department doesn't care if I change the name. The people that are like, you have to change all the names unless they're dead. And then you realize, oh, you don't care. This isn't like it's masked. The legal department is masked in a fake, we are loving and we care. But they don't. No. They just don't want to be sued. No. They just yeah. don't want any legal trouble. And there's something liberating about that. And the food companies, when I say they don't care, and weed, I'm not trying to it's convict you. I'm humanity. Like, no, these weed things, is these the worst. These don't care about Weed got it. bought up by William Morris, and they're dirty now, too. Oh, really? Yeah. They they try to make it illegal forever and lobby, you know. They, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, now that. they bought tons of land in Humble and the and the Triangle. I'm a weed guy. I like, yeah, I no, like my history. my wife is from Humble. The same people, the tobacco Humboldt. people that were lobbying against it and pushing for people to be in jail for it, are now buying up all the land. And they own Medmen, that trendy little weed shop. Is oh, wow. Marlboro, it's Marlboro, really, William, or whatever. I said William Morris, not them. The, 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 yeah, yeah, not the WME. Yeah, the, but there is like a William Morris that. Yeah, it's something else. I forgot all the technicalities. Bottom line, big tobaccos buying up all the weed and pushing That's out the little guy because weed is a beautiful thing of all these healthy hippies that sun and soil and bat guano. But then these big, large companies come in and it's pesticides make it produce, produce. Right. And so there's an innocence and a natural thing to it when you use that in medicine. But of course, with this conglomerate industrial system and that's that in gobbles there. everything that's in there and then it ruins it yeah it always ruins it i was watching something about the way when you harvest when you grow things like a corporation so corporations always just want to grow it's growth over anything else <laughs> growth over humanity growth over humanity hey, that village is in the way <laughs> exactly or these out. chemicals are killing people but it, it increases profit so you just do it we're doing that in the crops as well meaning the way crops are supposed to work is there's a season, let's say corn grows, mm -hmm. and then it dies, and then that death fertilizes it and enriches the soil, and the next season the corn grows. But there's all that death time. And we're like these, I've said this a million, but like we're inhale-only motherfuckers. Yeah. We're like growth-only motherfuckers. And you referenced it's the new earth. He goes, something that only grows is a monster. It's a cancer. Yeah. That's literally what That's cancer what does. People are waking so up, though. We it's beautiful. can be cancer. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. zoom out and think of us as cells. We can be cancer. Does that make... Like, oh, literally to the earth. And we are. It has... Or we can smoke for the earth and for the for the... I don't know how much we can affect the solar system, but the planet Nukes. is a body. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure. Who yeah. knows? Anyway, sorry, I went no, on a No, no, I there. love that. No, because we are a cancer to the world. And really? Just from cobalt mines to to 
oil mine, whatever. That's right. To, to green energy, to, ba- to, to big oil, we Inhale ravage only. the earth. We only want corn growing all the time. Yeah. I just did a bit about this. I don't know if I can make it work, but I was like, you don't want what you want. You want to be surprised by what you want. You want what you want, but you want it on terms that you don't control. Because I had my friend come over and play video games because the only time we get to play video games is at a birthday party for my daughter and we get 10 minutes to play and we have to sneak it and then she comes in and catches us and we have to stop or let her play. Exactly. But So I had him come over and we played and we were like bored within five minutes. And and the other example I give is like the best back rubs of my life are not at the Four Seasons where I pay someone hundreds of dollars to rub my back. You know it's coming. Then you're critiquing it. You're like, it's pretty good. Yeah. But if I just rubbed your shoulders, like Uh. behind you, you're like, it's like fucking great. And that's life. We think we want life to just be inhalation and just corn growing all the time and not to die. The whole thing is rigged to imbue it with the only meaning it can, which is the urgency of time. Does that make sense? Uh, I used some big words. Yeah, no, no. We've done one. What time is it? It wasn't the big words. It was the big finish. It was just. Like, oh, well, that was condescending of me to say the big words. Then <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive me and forget. But ayahuasca, forgive me. Like a real forgive. Oh, yeah. Wait, I have to leave at 12. I have to leave at 1145, I guess. Ah, oh, shit, man. It's always these good ones. No, we're good, man. Anyone? No, I know. I know. <laughs> I was just taking a moment of appreciation for your eyebrow work. And also how fun this is and how I don't want it. No, you just get too deep for me sometimes to where I'm on the beginning of my spiritual journey where I'm just like, I, 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 uh, it's just, it's hard to understand this shit and I struggle with it daily. Yeah. You know? I think all I was saying was life pleasure exists because there's a clock on the game and you know uh, you're going to die at some point. That I get that. But you just helped me because I'm making this point on stage, and I'm like, why doesn't anyone understand like, what I'm that, saying? That's a much better way. It'll hit harder when you... <laughs> yeah, I said ice cream wouldn't be delicious if you knew there was infinite no, ice cream and infinite time. That is true, and I do understand that completely of because course. the time clock, tick-tock, tick-tock, is what makes this enjoyable because exactly. we are going to die or go home. Go home. Yeah, yeah, energy can never be created or destroyed, bitches. That's right. We're energy. That's right. <laughs> I love that the atheist that only believes in science. I'm like, well, science just told you. Yeah. There's something. You know, it's been interesting is, is the ultimate rebellion is to say God doesn't exist. That's, that's the ultimate way to say that we split off from perfect oneness so far and so independently and so desperately. And we're such victims and everything is fucked and we die and the food is running out. That, that is this altar of like, God is dead. Like God is dead is the ultimate goal of the ego is yeah. to say, he's dead. My name's on this building. He's alive. I have a hundred billion dollars yeah. and it's horrible news because you're afraid of God because you don't trust it. You go so far out of your way to say it doesn't exist because you think he's going to kick you in a furnace. He's going to be mad at you. Use whatever pronoun you want. God is going to this, this, thing. he's going to destroy you because we destroyed him because we exist in duality and God is perfect love. So how did we get here? So we must be mad. Yeah. It's the garden of Eden. We ate from the apple and he's mad at us. He but you have to go like, apple. exactly. <laughs> or the apple never existed in the yeah. first place. It's all just a little dance, a little play. It's harmless. It's okay. That I think the whole point of this is to remember you don't have to be afraid of your source. You don't even have to call that God. You can just say yeah. there is a body of infinite light. You can call it science's words. You can call it religion's words. It doesn't matter. You just have to learn to trust it. It'll change how you live. It'll change how you die. If you trust. And you just feel better. (laughs) And for fuck's sake, you just feel fucking better. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't on you. A big few. Yeah. A big few. Thank you. Who can be dis- who can be disappointed who asks for what he already has is a line from A Course in Miracles. Ooh, I like that. Isn't that good? It's already here. Who can be disappointed who asks for what he already it. has? And you just have to remove, you don't have to, you don't have to do anything. You can do whatever you want, but you can remove the impediments to the awareness of your of yourself and just go, no, oh, there's Pete. Pete's afraid today. I Pete's know. angry today. There's fucking impediments. Craig's, Craig's oh. smoking weed today. Oh. You know what I mean? Like there can be a dispassionate, Oh, the yeah. analogy I love speaking of those damn impediments is weeds. I call them weeds. This is the garden, and you just say, Always get the negative thoughts, get it out of there. Weed the garden. Oh, yeah, get them, let the seeds be bountiful. Yeah, because those stupid weeds, you know, 
how many do we have? They just won't shut up. I agree. You know, I, I think the fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. To quote, yeah, uh, Marion Williamson, you're not you're not afraid that you're shit. You're afraid that you're everything. I can't wait to send you some links. I can't wait for these links. Have you heard of Dolores Cannon and her stuff? I've never been to the Dolores Canyon. No. Ooh. What is this? <laughs> this weird lady from Arkansas that was a hypnotist and spoke through a... Uh, a channel? Yeah. Really? Who'd and she channel? Everybody. Nostradamus, aliens. Like, you want to go down some rabbit hole? You want to eat a gummy and watch some Dolores Cannon? Ooh. Mind blown. I love it, though. I love it. She's my favorite in Dr. Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay. And that will Ram Dass. Yep. Yep. There he is. So many, so many great teachers. Buddy, I'm... I get my education from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything better? It's See, got some knowledge. That's what I want to say when we're talking about booby traps, right? So ayahuasca booby traps you to remember that you're loved. The internet is all porn and it's all fucking conspiracy it's theories. Him. And then it goes, guess kittens. what? Yeah. And Earth kitten ships. videos. But then Earth ships come in and then education comes in. And all of this stuff is available. Once I'm you just, realize there's solutions, you, you just it takes the weight off your shoulder too. Just like people think there's a shortage of food. It's like, no, we just don't garden. Right. Get some chickens. Right. It's the solutions are so simple. Collect rainwater. Right. Government, stop giving the water to Nestle. Wow. <laughs> How about that? Wow. Then, yeah. There's been a drought every year since in California that we signed a paper giving Nestle so much water for like six bucks. I don't know the real dollar amounts, but wow. yeah, people don't pay attention to this stuff. It's just, it's, it's all abundant. It's free. Right. With a little labor. I scandal noted systems. Louis C.K. Anyway. goes, God comes back and sees we're all fighting and stuff because we need money. And he's like, Why do you need money? Because we gotta buy food. And he goes, Food? I left that shit on the ground. <laughs> it's so true. It's so it's so true. true. The seeds. But, the, but see, the, this the, is why I like the course. The course goes, we don't want to accept the truth of infinite love because we crave our individuality. <laughs> we we would rather be miserable in individuals yeah. than merge into oneness. It's like on Star Trek, you know how you're afraid of the Borg because they've assimilated into one mind? I think that's a, a pretty good and inaccurate view of our fear of going back into oneness. As we go, we, I'd rather be over here, and I'm speaking as me, complaining than just be perfect love. How boring is perfect love? It's pretty yeah. boring. It can be pretty boring. I can't wait to go back. <laughs> I can't wait to be that kind of bored, man. No, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's what we're here for, for the spice. They say this is Dolores Cannon said this is the hardest one too. This realm, this realm, yeah, is the hardest one. Uh huh. Oh wow. And she says it's because it's the only realm that we have our memories wiped, where we all come in with the plan and purpose and innate ability to do something, and then they go, "Good <sighs> luck." And the rest, you know what you're supposed to do. Dude, it's the arcade. It's the cosmic yeah. arcade. And you put a quarter in the yeah. earth machine and people are like, really? And you're like, or you're smoking something. Yeah. I've, all, I've said it before, but it's like, what if when you die, you, you go away and then you exhale and your friends are around you and they go, did it work? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah. And oh, it, yeah. <laughs> every morning I wake up and my dreams, I'm a vivid dreamer and I'm a lucid dreamer and I love my dreams. It's great. It doesn't matter. I'm in the dream going, don't don't forget this. And I'll remember 0.03% of it. I know. And I think, and it's a little bit weird to say this, I think that might be how it is when this is over. I'll go like, Canadian? Like, dad? I think I was a dad. Vague. Like, what did you dream last night? Isn't it a relief to think that this might just be like that? According to Dolores Cannon, you experience everything you've ever done in your life in a moment. And you also experience how you made people feel from their perspective. Oh, wow. And that's the hell. Like she said, there's no hell. But the only hell is experience the bad things you did as mm. the person you did them to. And that, I don't know. That's I, interesting. I, I like it. Oh, well. Yeah, I don't know. I who knows? We'll I find could out. see that that would be a game you might play. I would say I, I, it would be interesting to talk to her. I would say I agree with you because people smoke DMT and have that exact experience. I experienced all the suffering of the world in an instant, all yeah. of it. So I know we can play any game we want. I believe that the mind can create and and sort of miscreate whatever it wants. But behind it, I would say there's there is an ultimate God going like. Are you done playing with <laughs> balls and yeah. sticks and putting on a little show for yourself? It's what Alan Watts says. When the play is over, you go back and take your masks off and 
and your enemy was you and you were you yeah. and your friend was you and and you just laugh. It's okay. You just laugh. So even that pain feels a little bit like you you were naughty. Oh, Craig, you hurt my feelings, so now you're dead. You're going to feel how I felt when you hurt my feelings. Or, Craig, we were just puppets, and the whole yeah. thing was being orchestrated by that, a, a misunderstanding. She was clear on that. She's like, it's quick. It's not. You yeah. don't. She, her message was, you do not burn in hell for eternity. Mm. It's a brief moment, and you're. Just, it's meant to teach to you. To purge. Like, to learn. Yeah. You're like, oh, you fucked up. That's interesting. That's all it is. And she gave me this analogy because I was raised in the Catholic Church, Episcopalian. I didn't really download the data, but I, it still was in me, so to speak. So mm. you're afraid of hell and the burning ring of fire or whatever. And she said, like, you're God's children, right? Like, would you, she asked somebody in the audience, would you throw your kid in the fire? And they, they're like, no. And they're like, well, then why would God throw you in the fire? It's a lie made up by the church to get your money. Yeah. To make you feel guilty. It was written in later. You know and who, I was like, that adds up. You know who said something very similar? Mm. I say to camera, JC. It's Joshua in the Scott. New Testament. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Christ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did you say? Joshua Scott Chazes from, <laughs> from NSYNC. JC. Ah! <laughs> As I'm wearing a cross. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You went to the... Your first JC is... Like Jesus. is <laughs> from you NSYNC? Said, yeah, the NSYNC <laughs> Jesus. Um, no, he said... I love Jesus. Who, who would give their child a snake when he asked for bread? Jesus was funny. That's funny. Yeah. That's like a yeah. that's three steps that's removed. A good one-liner. You could have said like a stick. He yeah. said a snake when he asked for bread. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good stuff. I'm down with JC. That fool's dope. Okay, we talked about all this God stuff, and I love it. I have to ask you some questions about one of your fa my favorite. This will be how we close, if that's okay. We'll end on a laugh. I could talk to you for nine hours. We got to do this again. Yes. You're so great. Thank you. And maybe the 18th. I don't know. Yeah. We have to Ooh. see. Recap. We have to see. Ooh. I think it's, for, anyway. You'd love it. You would love it. You would love yeah. the safest, the shaman, this Reiki. Dude, this guy's been sitting with the medicine like 20, 30 years. Wow. I call him, I call him Yoda. Like, he's he's mm. the Jedi. Mm. He's like, I'm like, I... He's and you do it, and do you do it three days in a row, or you just do it's it once? It's two days. Two days. Yeah. Twice. You do it twice. Yeah, two-day retreat. Yeah, two times. You drink oh, wow. the medicine. Wow. Yeah. Where? In uh, nature? Around, yeah. It's somewhere beautiful? Uh, I'm not be. asking for it. No, it's, it's the illegal, so yeah, we'll no, talk I know. about it after yeah, the okay, show. Okay, yeah, but it's somewhere beautiful. Hey, over there. <laughs> somewhere beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, I understand. You just want to be somewhere natural yeah. and, and beautiful. Yeah, this is convenient because it's local and you don't have to go to Peru or Mexico. Right. You know, it's a little harder. Word up. Yeah. Okay, real quick. You do this bit about getting fired from Trader Joe's, mm -hmm. which I love. Thank you. And every time you, I've seen you do it, I saw you do it in Montreal, I watched you do it on YouTube. I just have so many questions. So tell the story. Not, you don't have to do the bit, but I have to ask you some questions. I need yeah, answers. Yeah. So tell the story. First of all, you worked seasonally at Trader Joe's and then that ended up working I, there 10. Yeah. I got a, I, it's, 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 it's a joke, but it's not a joke. I got hired at Trader Joe's for seasonal work and I stayed over a decade, <laughs> 11 years. And I, uh, and then I was fired, uh, because I, I farted on my manager and filmed it and posted it to Instagram and it went viral. It's oh, that was so part of the problem. Yeah. You got picked up. So what? So there's there's the stage version and the behind the scene the real version. It's it's very close though. I did yeah. I was a jackass. I was filming stuff at Trader Joe's. I'm yeah. a comedian. Yeah. It was I was sorry going viral. Yeah. I remember I got messaged by Tia Tia and Tamara, sister sister. Sure. I grew up watching them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, You're so funny. I was at Trader Joe's. And you know and Tia and, Tamara loved you? Yeah. And because oh, wow. I was I'd shake your sodas and sell them to you. But I was I was loved. I was loved. Like it was to an old person, but we're friends. I'd give them free bags or something, you know. Like it was oh it was my a bit. God. I'd work the milk box, I'd scare you and film you, you know. <laughs> and, it, it like, ah! and then uh, <laughs> just crazy, just chaos. I'm a jackass. I was, you know, a, a kind one. And then just fun stuff. And then I farted on my manager, filmed it. Okay, posted first it. question. Hmm? Where on his body did you fart? I farted on him many times, but the, the one I filmed. Well, there was a little you barrier. You done it many times? <laughs> yeah, he's my buddy. It was like a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're getting to it. He didn't fire you. Yeah, yes. That, okay, so where did you fart on him the time I you farted him? farted him in the manager area, the pit. They call it the pit at Trader Joe's. And I said, hey, what's up, fart ass? And I said, fart ass. And then I, and then I farted on him. Where? 
just like Adam. That was a that was a barrier, Adam. you know. Oh, okay. He he was you on the other like, side of register. I wasn't on him. Yeah. But I had in the past. You, you know. have placed one on him, oh, yeah. but not this time. Oh yeah. We were always, you know, this is He laughed. It's cool. Yeah, he's my buddy. And then uh <laughs> filmed it, posted it, Instagram, went viral. A customer ratted me out to a manager at another store, like up north, like Oregon or something. They went to corporate. They Wait, said, they showed some just some citizen, of, like yeah. a neighborhood watch. Yeah. A was rat. like, I'm gonna show this yeah. to a manager at another Trader Joe's. Yeah. Because you farted? Yeah. And it started to pick up. It was daily. Steam. It was daily. It started to pick up steam. <laughs> Inner steam. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, corporate told my manager to fire me. And this guy was my friend. This guy literally went to my show Saturday and fired me like Tuesday or Wednesday. He was a fan and a friend. And we're still, we still text. Oh, wow. And the whole joke, but the it's true. Emoji. He's reading me the corporate script. Like, you be, it's been brought to my attention. You've been posting on social media. And, and, and you know, I'm like, dude, you're in the video. <laughs> like, I tagged you in it. You shared it, <laughs> and uh, but it's true. And then they let me go. But it was it was the most. I was ready to quit because of stand up, and this was God's way. I was too scared to quit because I was maxed out at twenty four dollars an hour, and I had full benefits. They gave me time off for stand up. They knew I was funny. They knew I had a path. So it was cush. It was yeah. easy streets. And then God was like, you got to let go of that and you got to fly. And then it took them firing me. And, and I was there 11 years, you know, that's all I knew. And it was, it was, of course, you know, I felt sick and scared. And then, and then it all happened. JFL, I met you, I got reps, wow, I started wow. headlining. And it just was like, it was all Push the video the helped nest. getting fired for that. And then the bit is so good. The, the bit's good. But it also helps your life. It helped my life. It helped me grow as a fan base, as a performer. Wow. I still try not to do those jokes, and the fans literally will shout them out and be like, do Trader Joe's. I'm like, damn it. But I, yeah, you know, I give, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, it's well, a beautiful that problem. That really speaks to another. I will sandwich this with compliments. When I watch you do it, there's some guys you watch and you're like, well, what's the new material? There's some guys you just want to hang out with and your fans just want to hang out with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that's why I was like, I don't normally ask people about bits, but I'm like, it's just fun oh, thank you. hearing yeah. you talk, the way you talk, the way you think and the way you are. That's why I understand that you could prank. Like if you jumped out of a milk carton at Trader Joe's, oh, if it was awesome. you, yeah. that's kind of what I mean when I'm like, I would do ayahuasca with you. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> it's, there's something about your energy that you're like, I feel like I'd be okay yeah. as long as I could look over and Craig's in a diaper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going like it's not for poop. It's because I want to feel like a baby. Dry diaper? No, yeah. that's Craig. Is that JC, JC? from NC? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your podcast clips are so great. You're always just having fun, being light. It, it inspires me on this show too. I'm like, don't forget to have fun. You know, like I watch you, and I'm like, right. I go, I fun. yeah. That's my goal to be light, be light, because it does go dark. You look out, and you're yeah. like. Yeah, ah, war, yeah. or oil, whatever. Right. You're like, nah. You don't know both. what to do, but it's you just both. just laugh. Right. We're like, I love uh, Anthony Bourdain, and he said this about chefs. But chefs are on the side of the angels. We're on the side of the angels. We make jokes. Right. We don't work for the bomb machines. Right. Right. We're doing the Lord's work. We just make even it. if it's a stupid bit or you know. Well, it's say buddy, somebody or a deep one. I think we're all capable of of furthering either fear or love at all yeah. times. Oh yeah. And I, I think there are even comedians that can <laughs> we, further the fear one, but I mean like, so, and there might be bomb makers that can further the, go, uh, the love. Yeah. One. I don't mean by doing bombs. I mean like, you know, your day, your whole day isn't bombs. <laughs> yeah. 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 They go home to their family. <laughs> yeah. Or exactly. they whistle blow. <laughs> that was, that was a, when father Greg, father Greg's book, he talks about, um, some dude that's locked up being kind to a guard. Cause he was like, cause if I, fuck with him he goes home and what he hits his kids yeah you know what i mean like there's this awareness where you go like even the guards even the bomb makers like it's dr bronner's we're back all yeah. one you know yeah all one baby it's not easy to do that no but we're we're working it we are can you tell me thank you for answering those questions i had of so course. many thank you for having me yeah man the last question is can you think of a time in your life when you laughed hard really 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 hard where you were crying and you hurt. It doesn't have to be a good story. You can just tell me how old you were, where you were, who you were with. Um, one time in Las Vegas with my father, and uh, we went there two to four times a year. 
And oh uh, my god. And it was me and my mom and my sisters and my father came home drunk from gambling, but in a good mood this time. And he, uh, I was asleep with my mouth open and he was drunk and started putting random items in my mouth no. as a kid. <laughs> and uh, he put like his keys in his watch and I didn't wake up. And then he was laughing like Harry and the Hendersons when he throws the yogurt at the TV. That like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I woke up to him laughing like that. And then we all started laughing. Everyone's laughing like a cackling hyena. I don't even know what we're laughing at, but I'm just laughing. I'm half asleep, so like that didn't even <laughs> register that I'm the I'm the joke. And we're cackling so loud that the the neighbor comes and bangs on the door of the hotel, like, keep it down. This is like 3, 4 a.m. You know? Oh, my God. And my mom gets up, and she doesn't have her teeth in. She has no teeth, and her dentures are out. And the guy's like, tell your kids to shut up in there. And like an old man in tidy whities too. Tidy whities <laughs> And then she said, it's not my kids, it's my husband. <laughs> and, it's, and it's been a joke in my family for about 25 years. It's not my kids, it's my husband. And we laugh and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> toothless. It's not my toothless kids, it's my husband. <laughs> it's so good. That can help it. That hey. helps the voice. <laughs> and when did you realize there was a watch in your mouth? That's what no, I'm missing not in that story. Until like the next day or years later. I didn't I wasn't aware. I just remember this is fun. We're laughing, huh? You know, that's all I remember. And a tick tick and sound from laughing, within. But like <laughs> that guy. <laughs> <laughs> is there a bomb in my tummy? <laughs> like cackling, cackling. Fucking incredible. Well, Craig, you are incredible. You're so funny. You're so talented. I, I, you're already killing it, but I just see even bigger and better for you moving you. on. I, so, yeah, go ahead. I just, That's it. Yeah, thank, thank you, man. What's the name of your pod? Cause My podcast is Community Service. Check it out. Yeah. Talk about farts and sobriety and drugs. That's great. Yeah. Well, wishing you all the best, my man. Thank you. Would you say keep it crispy? It's how we end. The guest says keep it crispy. Keep it crispy with Pete Holmes. <laughs> no, no, no. You just say keep it crispy. <laughs> no, 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 no. You just say keep it crispy. You don't say with, with Pete Holmes. <laughs> keep it crispy. Oh, you, you make me, you make me.